Working at an office could be a monotonous, soul-draining way to spend 40 hours or more of your week. But for a lot of people, it's a necessary evil if, you know, you like to do things like eat food and live indoors. It's even more tedious if you go back to the days before ping pong table and Taco Tuesday style offices. The stuff you see on TikTok that looks like adult daycare. If you want to hold on to your sanity, you gotta find little things to break up the routine and experience just a little bit of joy. And what better way than with a good old-fashioned office prank? The thing is though, while on TV, Jim Halpert can inflict endless amounts of psychological warfare upon his likely autistic co-worker. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. It's not always like that in real life. Take, for example, the story of a Canadian Redditor's office prank that leads to the Mounties getting involved and leads to a person almost dying. How did a simple office prank spiral this badly out of control? Let's find out in this episode of Tales from the Internet. This video is sponsored by Helix. Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding, custom fit to your needs and shipped right to your door. I've had my Helix mattress now for over a year and I'm still having some of the best sleep of my life. When I had first gotten my Helix mattress, I had been complaining about neck pain and back pain and since I've been on it, it is yet to return. It's really easy to get a Helix mattress of your own. You just take their sleep quiz which helps determine what mattress is right for you based on your preferences and sleeping style. Since I'm a side sleeper who likes a soft mattress, they gave me the sunset. And if you're nervous about buying a mattress from the internet, Helix gives you a 100 nights of sleep trial. That's more than three months. And if you don't like the mattress, they'll pick it up right from your door and issue a full refund. If you do like it, each Helix mattress has a 10 year warranty. And you don't have to spend a lot of money right up front with Helix's financing and payment plans. Just click the link below and go to helixsleep.com slash wang. You'll get up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress, as well as two free pillows. Today's story was voted 2013's Fuck Up of the Year on r slash TIFU. So you're probably expecting some kind of bodily fluids, some kind of weird sex stuff, some fashion of gross regret. Well, this story has none of that. But I don't think I've ever seen something so seemingly innocent spiral so badly out of control. On May 28th of 2013, a user named Into the Wilder posts, TIFU by playing a Think Geek practical joke. The Canadian FBI was called and I nearly killed my seven year career. I work as a loans officer in a rural branch of a small Canadian bank. Sorry for your suddenly sodden panties, ladies. As the intro might imply, this man is not exactly in love with his job. He explains that after losing his old job selling computers in his early 20s, he kind of just fell into this position. And unfortunately, he wound up actually being pretty good at it. He says that although he is well liked by the rest of the staff, his sense of humor doesn't really fit in with the rest of theirs. Which has been a pretty frustrating thing for him and is ultimately what makes this turn into a big debacle. He also brings up his love of Think Geek. Now currently, Think Geek is a barely existent subsidiary of GameStop. If it ever has anything stocked at all, it's junk like off-brand chargers and earbuds. And at the time just before that, it's mostly just Funko Pops and pop culture merch tie-ins like Funko Pops. And while that was always a part of the brand, the further back you go, the more the focus was on things like weird toys and gizmos and gadgets. It was kind of like a throwback to those Johnson Smith things you never knew existed catalogs, but with a modern twist. Even just thinking about those catalogs made me stop working on this video for a couple hours just to look through old catalogs. Like where else are you going to find Billy Bob Teeth, a demonic possessed hand, and a freaky flashing eye sunglasses all in one place? But back to Think Geek. Browsing the site back in the day was that kind of vibe. And Into the Wilder liked to decorate his office space with stuff from Think Geek. Examples he gave were the Conan the Barbarian letter opener, a Salvador Dali melting clock, and a magnetic levitating globe. He was constantly buying weird little knickknacks from the site, so come Christmas time, he's a pretty easy guy to shop for. And that year for Christmas, and the Christmas before the incident, his family got him one of the gadgets from that site that I probably thought about more than any other one, the Anoyatron. The Anoyatron, if you're not familiar, is a little prank device. There are a few different iterations of it over the years with a few different sound effects it has, but the core concept is always the same. It's a tiny little electronic device that you hide somewhere. To compare it to a quarter for scale. And every few minutes, set at an interval that you choose, it lets out a tiny, barely audible beep. I imagine that most of you have encountered something like this over the years from a normal non-prank device. You know, like a carbon monoxide detector, a washing machine, something. So you know how maddening it can be with those devices that are way more obvious and easy to find. So imagine that with a device that's specifically designed to be annoying and hard to find with a three month battery life. 
And then if somebody finally finds it, they got this weird little circuit board. They're left wondering what purpose it serves. By removing it, did you just break some crucial component of the office? People are gonna lose their minds over this, but you know, in a way that's ultimately pretty harmless, or should be pretty harmless. So after thinking about it for a bit, he finally comes up with the perfect hiding spot for his Annoyatron. I came in early on a Monday and placed it behind a metal poster frame hanging on the wall in the office of one of my coworkers. I flipped the on switch and went blithely about my day, waiting for a reaction and to share a few chuckles. Considering he felt comfortable enough to go into this specific person's office and hide the Annoyatron, it was presumably one of the people there he had a better relationship with. So not much could go terribly wrong. You just go, hey, gotcha, with your office buddy and go on with your day. But it doesn't seem to be going as planned. Monday came and went. Nothing. Tuesday. Nothing. Wednesday and Thursday. Not a peep. At that point, I figured it was broken. Frankly, I kind of forgot about it. I had Friday off, and I suppose I would have checked it when I got back the following week. As the kind of person who double checks everything a million times, I'm kind of surprised he resists the urge to go back to the office and check the post just to make sure he really did turn it on, you know, thereby risking incriminating himself. But he didn't do it. The long weekend comes and goes, and he shows up to work as usual on Monday. When everyone gets there, all 16 workers are called into the manager's office. They're going to have an unscheduled conference call with the VP. At this point, Into the Wilder isn't really thinking much of it. Just going to be some kind of formality that probably could have been an email. A waste of time, but something you got to do when you work at an office. So the manager calls the district VP, who then introduces the head of security. And at that point, Into the Wilder starts to realize that this isn't a normal conference call. By now, the VP says, Some of you know about the device that was found at your branch last week. Device? What the hell? What kind of device could they possibly be talking Oh, holy Jesus fuck nuggets. When it was found on Thursday, nobody knew what it was, so it was brought to the branch manager, who then sent pictures of the device to me. Fuck. So the district VP forwards the pictures of the device to the head of security. The head of security isn't sure what this could be, but he suspects that it might be a listening device. But since he wasn't sure, he sends the pictures to the Canadian Security Intelligence Services, as well as the RCMP, aka the Mounties. As you may be aware, the Mountie always gets his man. Into the Wilder suddenly realizes the degree to which he is fucked. And it gets worse. The Canadian feds suspect that the little Annoyatron might be a bomb. So over the weekend, all the staff were told to stay home. And while they were gone, investigators swept the building to make sure there were no more such devices hidden around. And at this point, hearing all this, Into the Wilder is panicking. What, what's he going to do? And really, what do you do? My opinion, keep it to yourself. I mean, at this point, you got the feds involved, you got, you got the Mounties involved. They haven't gathered everyone in the office for a big dramatic reveal. You've made it this far, they probably have no idea that you're the one that put this behind that poster. And if they don't know by now, they probably never will. Just keep your mouth shut and you'll go away. So here's what he does. If I had sat down ahead of time to brainstorm a worst case scenario, I wouldn't have even come close to this epic corporate crap catastrophe. I had no choice. I took a shaky breath, steeled my nerve, clenched my ass cheeks tight, and tried to say, excuse me, but choked out a pubescent squeak instead. I cleared my throat, interrupted the conference call in that stuffy room full of my coworkers and spoke up, telling them it's a harmless noisemaker, taking responsibility and apologizing profusely. The room was dead quiet. The VP slowly says, thank you for speaking up. They'll stop the investigation and the call ends. Everyone files out. I asked the manager if she wants me to stay, but she says she can't talk to me right now. She doesn't talk to me for three weeks. And when she does talk to him finally, it turns out that her reaction, it was a bit more than just because, you know, how embarrassing it was to have the office shut down for the weekend. Then rally her whole staff into the office for a meeting with the district VP, get corporate involved, get the Mounties involved. All for her to be standing in front of everybody when they find out, oh, this was just a silly prank machine from thinkgeek.com. You see, what made this so much worse, the manager, not knowing what to do with this mystery device, she's driving home from the office and she has it in the passenger seat of her car. And when she's driving home from the office, that's when she gets a call from the feds saying, hey, you know what little thing you got there sitting in your passenger seat? There's a possibility that's a bomb. At that point, she bursts into tears and nearly drives her car into a ditch. So yeah, I guess a bit of a cold shoulder is understandable. 
The district VP threw a fit, and despite my 17-year unblemished work record, she tried really, really hard to have me fired. By some miracle, one of the company higher-ups appreciated the joke, and he winds up keeping his job. Luckily, they didn't charge me the $50,000 plus in lost business, staff wages, and other miscellaneous costs. No, I don't know why my manager didn't just ask her staff if anybody knew about it instead of sending a fucking urgent memo to the entire fucking universe. My office is full of a lot of things, but common sense isn't one of them. He concludes by saying that his days of office pranks are over. And amid all the comments wondering about, you know, was this just a lie made up to have some viral marketing for ThinkGeek? A username MindTaker had a great suggestion. The only thing that would have made this better would be if they had found it and did all this just to fuck with you. That would have been the perfect way to just flip this all back on him. All these is like some J. Walter Weatherman type guy to lose his hand in the end. That's why you don't yell. It also prompted a lot of people to share their own experiences with the Annoyatron. For example, you had one guy who had a friend place it in his room underneath his chair, which leads to removing every single object from his room one by one including his TV and his computer, which he had to disassemble before moving into the hallway. Ultimately, though, he never actually found the Annoyatron. He just kind of gives up on the search, and when he's trying to sleep, he just plays loud music. This goes on until the battery dies, and three years later, his friend admits that, yeah, so here's what I did. You have another guy who worked in an auto parts shop. He hides one near his boss's desk, and the boss, too, never finds it. He would just stand around with his co-workers and watch as he tried to find the beep. And then you got the former MySpace employee who had a coworker start tearing apart computers within an hour of an Annoyatron being planted. That being said, I'm sure some of you guys have stories with the Annoyatron. Let me know about them. I don't think the original ones are actually made anymore, but I did see some copies of them on Amazon. I'll link one of those in the description, but if you get in trouble, it's not my fault. Anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, check out my video about the human toe necklace. I'm out.